Well, when I was praying about what to share with you tonight, God entitled this, Greatness is Your Destiny. Amen? How many received that already? Greatness is your destiny. Last Tuesday night, I shared some specific practical examples of how people within this church is reducing their debts they owe and increasing their revenues. Remember that? I also asked by the show of hands who was doing something to either increase their revenue or decrease their expenses, and nearly every hand was raised. That is wonderful. Great job. You are to be congratulated. Keep it up. Continue to ask the Holy Spirit what else you can do. Then think about it, expecting for him to give you ideas. Be expecting that he's going to give you creative ideas and strategies that did not exist before. Amen? Be looking for that. Be expecting it. Ask him for it. The plan, seek wise counsel. The plan is for each of us to be doing something. Because we're all in different circumstances and situations in our finances. That's understandable. But as you do, regardless of how small it may be, the important thing is that you are doing something. Amen? How many will agree to do something productive to improve your finances? Positive results from some of your actions will allow you to do additional things. For example, once you get out of high interest debt like credit cards and consumer loans and perhaps even student loans, then we can talk about investments to get your money to start helping you with the cash flow. Does that sound good? Rather than making it more difficult, just think about this. If you can eliminate high interest debt, you will automatically have more cash flow by eliminating cash outflow, providing you more in your bank account. Then you grow it. Keep increasing your cash inflow and decreasing your cash outflow. You can do this. Amen? You can do what you can do, and then the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will help you to accomplish it successfully. Amen? He will help you accomplish it successfully, but you must do what you can do. We cannot just let him do it all for us because he would be the doer and not the helper. Once you have accomplished the first objective, such as paying off the credit card with the highest interest rate, then refocus on the next credit card with the second highest interest rate and then keep on going. Ask the Holy Spirit and then you research things that you can do to free up or earn more money. Now, last week, pastors had made a suggestion, which I thought was a good one, uh, that you could sell things in your garage sale and sell things that maybe sit in your attic and to free up some extra money. You'd be surprised what people will buy, things that you haven't used in years and probably never will. On a Saturday, you could liquidate hundreds of dollars of stuff, immediately pay on all of that on your outstanding debt. An example, if you had a credit card charging you 20% interest rate, and you sold $500 of things that you didn't need and paid it to reduce the balance. You immediately stopped 20% times $500 is $100 being taken from you every year. Many people carry balances on their credit cards for many years. So it's not just $100 taken from you one time, it's every year. People have asked me what should they invest in. Well, I first asked them this. Do you owe anything on credit cards or any other high interest rate loans? If they do, then I advise them not to invest in anything until they pay off the 20% interest rate cards. Does that make sense? Why would they take money that they have to, they have to try to earn 5 or 6 or 7% with an investment when they're paying 20%? It doesn't make any sense. Remember, when you eliminate debt, it's just like you earning what they're charging you. So just, so earn, quote, earn 20% by paying off debt. Amen? Everybody get that? Say this with me. Debt free, I shall be. Simple as that. Debt free, you shall be. We all shall be. I want to look around this congregation when this place is completely full and know for a fact that everybody is debt free. I think we're heading there. I believe it. Do you? I know a lot of people already are. They're already from the debt area over into the soundness, heading towards the strength area. Those three phases that we go through. I want to clarify this statement about being debt-free, uh, totally debt-free. Because if you have a really low interest rate, I don't want anybody to be confused, 
uh, if you have a really low interest rate, like a 3% home mortgage, I know people that took advantage of that when the interest rates were low, or interest free, free for a period of time on credit cards or something like that, uh, then that is use that to your advantage. Keep those low rates. It's very inexpensive money. Amen? So when I say get out of debt, I don't mean totally if you have a really, really low interest rate. If you've got a 3% uh, mortgage, for example, you can make more with your investment than 3%. So if you paid off all your high interest rate loans and still have some low rate loans, then it's time to invest at that time. The rationale is that you can make more than the 3% with investing and be money ahead, amen? In other words, if you will have more cash flow coming in than your investments, then cash flow going out in house payment. You might be able to invest and earn 8% and pay the, them 3% and you keep the 5% and your money ahead. This is basically leveraging your money. You know, there's a difference between being in debt <clears throat> and leveraging your money to be able to make even more. Do y'all understand the difference? Amen. Remember these three stages in your progress as you go. You go from number one, financial burden, that's with debt, to number two, financial stability, with no debt, to number three, financial strength, with cash flow and assets. Amen? Here are some differences the way people think. We've talked about how it's so important on how you think, and we want to think wisdom's ways, don't we? We want to think the way that God wants us to think. Now, some people think this way. Some people want the cheapest, while others want the best value. Some people save, while others invest. Some will buy liabilities, like things that cost them money, such as multiple cars, while others buy assets that earn them money. Some people say, I cannot afford it, while others say, how can I afford it? Some people lose money to inflation, while others invest in things that increase in value during inflationary times. Some people just get along in life while others take action and make things happen for themselves, all by the leading of the Holy Spirit. If you are serious about improving financial life, then you may need to think differently than you have in the past. Is anyone here interested in thinking bigger? Thinking better? Thinking prosperity? Well, God wants you to live that abundant life. Do we all agree with that? If so, then we must be thinking and doing things that will cause us to be able to live a life of abundance. Foolish spending habits are one of the biggest causes of why people are being held back in their finances. It's like uh, what you hear about the federal government. You've probably heard this phrase that it doesn't have a revenue problem, it has a spending problem. This is so true with so many people. If you can get disciplined and utilize wisdom, you will see your efforts be blessed even more because it lines up with God's plan for wise stewardship. Amen? I'm going to repeat that. If you can get discipline and utilize wisdom, you will see your efforts be blessed even more because it lines up with God's plan for wise stewardship. Amen? If you spend too freely, it will continually hold you back. It is contrary to wisdom's ways of doing things. You've heard of wisdom's ways of doing things. Once wise decisions in your earning and spending are being made consistently, you will see your prosperity and wealth accelerate. Once wise decisions in your earning and spending are being made consistently, you will see your prosperity and wealth really take off. The principles and laws of prosperity must not be broken or the ability to get to where you want to be will be diminished and restricted. Amen? I'm going to say it again. The principles and laws of prosperity must not be broken or the ability to get to where you want to be will be diminished and restricted. I received, uh, <clears throat> since last Tuesday night, I received another positive report. Do you all enjoy these positive testimonies? Every one of them's true. And from people you would know if I told you. I received another positive report of someone who invested money that they had been earning nothing. And they started invested in a stock in a certain company. They invested within the last month, and they just received their first dividend revenue just within the last week. He said this. He texted to me. He says, got dividends of $12,500. He says, he goes on and says, thank you so much. I have never received that much in dividends in my life. He was so happy. 
I was always at the mercy of hoping the market would go up, but not anymore. Now I am receiving significant dividend income plus great potential in stock price appreciation. Amen? It's happening. It's happening in all forms. Not just debt, but also people making, and making more money. Many people are increasing their revenue as they are implementing wise decisions along with insight, knowledge, understanding, and discernment. Remember that wisdom package we've been talking about? We've got to use all aspects of it. Being guided by the Holy Spirit with wise counsel will benefit you greatly. Always be involved. Do your research. You have a very important part to play in your success, your prosperity, and your abundant life. As we have a partnership with our helper, that is the Holy Spirit, who is always, always ready to assist us in everything that we are willing to include him in. It's important that we include him, not forget him and get busy in our day-to-day -day lives. This is basketball season. I just got back from Orlando, Florida to watch uh, my alma mater, uh, Oral Roberts University, play in the NCAA tournament. And uh, have anybody heard of Michael Jordan, the basketball player? I think most people have. I'll tell you a little story about Michael. Because when Michael Jordan was a sophomore in high school, you know how great he had became. But when he was a sophomore in high school, he tried out for the varsity basketball team and was, did not make it. He was cut. His mother did not complain to the school. She did not complain to the coach either. She didn't transfer schools. She suggested that Michael, she didn't suggest that Michael try a different sport or even quit. She simply told Michael this, get in the gym and work harder. He did just that, and he eventually became the greatest basketball player in, of all time. His net worth is now over $2 billion, with a B. Michael has said that in all of the basketball games that he has played in, he never thought of it as playing against another team or a player. Instead, in his mind, he was always competing against himself, striving to be better. Now, God expects us to do our very best, doesn't he? To never just quit. He has even made it easier for us by giving us the Holy Spirit, our helper. Remember to always do what you can do, and he will do what you can't do. It will take you to greatness. Amen? You know, I've shared with you some poems that the Lord's given me over the last several weeks, and he gave me another one on this one to kind of summarize what we've talked about. And this one is entitled, Destined to be Great. When financial matters are not going your way, always remind yourself to just stop and pray. For the Holy Spirit will give you insight so you'll know what to do, wrong or right. He's always guided you in the past, in your finances, decisions that'll last. He expects your choices to always be wise, to see your bank account to nothing but rise. It may seem that all you have is debt, but soon freedom is what you'll get. Upward and onward to increased cash flow, but never forget we each must sow. We must always strive to do our best. When we do, he will do the rest. In our efforts, we must never quit not to do nothing and just sit. You will have to watch what you spend so you won't ask someone to lend. For with God, you will never be late. Right on time, you're destined to be great. Amen?